just tell the story you want to tell make it as epic as possible make it as character driven as possible just build this world and uh, put it out there make this book make a book that, make a book that you want to read What's up? What's up? How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? We got Edwin the Ace in the house. <laughs> Who's in the chat? We got Billy Power Max, Skull, my brother, Skull, Vale Ned. Uh-oh. What did I do, Dean? What did I do? Why am I getting kicked? <laughs> I'm starting it early, you know. Just breaking the ice. Uh, I guess I... Yeah, yeah. D D likes to bust my chops, but he's never told me to kick myself on my own stream before. So I don't know. Maybe um, he's hoping uh Phantomy will show up again, you know. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> what was that? Why did I had to restart or something, right? Oh, that yeah, was on my um you had to leave my closeout uh, stream. Yeah. Closeout stream, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Ali took over Phantomy, yeah. yeah. She did a great um, job. Man. Good, good, good. Yeah, she's 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 a cool new uh new uh um, New cover to Comics Gate. She's like one of my favorite of the new the new blood, you know. Us old timers, you know. <laughs> so you gotta get put I was, faster. I was just saying the other day I was uh, talking to somebody. Actually, I was talking to Jesse Miller because uh, I still talk to him every now and then. You know, he likes to crap on Comics Gate now, but like whenever I'm around, he'll he'll curb his his talking about it. But we were talking, and I said, "Dude, I'm having fun in Comic Skate again. There's a whole new blo like line of blood, new blood that came in that like have no clue about the past. That um, they're just here to have fun, make books, and 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 you know do their part in the culture war. And I was like, and that and it really like invigorated me over the last like year, you know. Um, so and uh, he was like, he was like, really? I was like, yeah, but uh." Yeah, because I was, like, talking with Lola. We were both saying, like, you know, God, it's been four years. In Comics Gate time, that's, like, 45 to 50 years. Uh, so, um, you know, when we start, when I started off, I was 40, and now I'm 90, you know, so <laughs> in Comics Skate years. But uh, you've, been, uh, you, you've been around a long time, too. You've seen it come and go, you know. Yeah. So, and, uh, yeah, I, I kind of feel like I didn't know so much back then, but I guess your, uh, your Twitter handle was like a little foreshadowing to what, what you're doing now with, uh, with your book. Um, yeah, it's, uh, is, life has a funny way of working out sometimes, you know, like stuff sometimes is meant to be, you know, like one door closes and then magically a new door opens that ends up being exactly what you needed. So that. A lot of the ace has been that, you know, like uh, the process has been like starts and stops. And then when I've had to pivot, the thing that I pivot to actually ends up being exactly what I need for the project to continue. So it's been really you know, interesting, it's, right? It's funny you say that because for the most part of my life, whether it be music or art or both, it's been the same thing, you know, like um, throughout my music pursuits uh that was like 20 years of that every turn i made was always a good one except for like the last two um last two big moves um and then i just kind of went like okay well that this isn't gonna happen and just kind of started having fun with it and right around that same time is when i kind of fell uh fell into the uh the doorstep of comic skate and then boom pivoted right back into art you know, which I had pivoted away from when I focused on music. So it's funny that you you, you say that because it's true. Like, you know, sometimes you, you don't realize the decisions that you make will actually uh, uh, be more beneficial than what you hoped for, you know. So um, I kind of feel the same way. But um, for some of the people who uh, might not know... Um, 
give us a little bit about yourself. Like, how long have you been into into comics? Uh, man, I've been into comics uh, several decades now. Uh, you know, uh, I grew up in Puerto Rico, uh, came to the States uh, a couple years in, so it's around like uh, seven. And, uh, you know, like uh, I didn't know anything, any English or anything. Uh, you know, I was here with my my cousin living, uh, you know, me, my brother, my sister, my mom, we're all kind of living with her until, you know, we got situated. And, you know, uh, comics are basically the, the thing that I found that kind of keep me kind of sane, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, I, even though I didn't really know, you know, I couldn't really read English or anything, just the images alone would kind of capture my imagination, you know? Because I was big into, like, He-Man and stuff like that. We had that in Puerto Rico, so, you know, it yeah. kind of had that similar kind of thing. Uh, and it was also, like, a big uh, impetus in learning English and kind of, I think it's about my vocabulary overall and kind of picking up everything pretty fast, uh, you know, because it wasn't too much longer since uh, I was in full, like, English classes and stuff. And, you know, it kind of took off from there. But, you know, aside from, like, basically, like, a little, like, four or five-year gap, you know, I've basically been collecting since the early 90s, you know, till now. Right. And I and I heard you mention uh, on a couple of shows, that, like, your favorite book, the one that really got you hooked was the, was Darkhawk. Well, uh, the, the first book was really uh, X-Men. You know, my first ever comic actually picked up was an uh, issue of Spider-Man. I believe it's like, uh, I always, the title always kind of escapes me, but I believe it's The Deadly Foes of Spider-Man. It was issue four of four. <laughs> I picked it up <laughs> randomly and, you know, I knew Spider-Man. I was like, everybody knows Spider-Man. So, right, uh, right. you know, it was kind of cool. Like I dug it and then I picked up uh, one day, I went back to, to like the little like liquor store where, where I had found the Spider-Man I saw. I believe it's Uncanny X-Men 283. Uh, it uh, has Bishop and Storm on the cover. Or yes. by Los Portacio. Yep. And that just blew me away, man. Like that image is seared into my head. That's just like the art. I remember just flipping through it, man. And just like, I had no idea. It's like part three of like an ongoing storyline. And it throws you right into the fire, man. But I just remember seeing Will Wilson's art and just being mesmerized by it. And it really just kind of, it hooked me like anytime I'd see an X-Men or Spider-Man comic, I would snatch those up. But Dark Hawk was a book that, you know, like you're talking about like, you know, on Kenny X-Men 283, you're talking about Spider-Man issue, whatever, you know, 200 or 300, however many issues Spider-Man had around that time. So like Dark Hawk was an issue I could pick up from issue one. Like I remember right. like I found issue, like I think it was, I found a lot, I think, like found like one through four, something like that. You know, just picking it up and following it since until like the series ended at 50. So like, he felt like a hero in a world that, you know, I could go from the ground floor up and I would know everything about it. I never felt like I had to read past issues or, you know, see the little editor's box or anything. Like oh, yeah. I knew see everything issue, about it. See issue 134, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, no, I remember when Dark Hole came out, like I, that, that was one of my favorite ones at the time. Cause that was like the early nineties, right? That was like 91. That yeah, 90, definitely 90. Uh, early '90s, and uh, that was like around the same time where they tried out a bunch of like those like uh, darker ground level heroes, like uh, Darkhawk, uh, Sleepwalker came out around the same time. Yeah, Deathlock, uh, uh, all those books. Yep, there. yep, I had all of those. Yeah, I, we, I, we, we're probably around the same age. Are you like uh, I'm 45? A little younger, so, but not not too young. Little, little younger. Yeah, because we're all, we're talking about like the same kind of the the same kind of uh, stuff like you mentioned, He Man, X Men, and you know, so it's right around the same time. Fool Killer, yeah, I remember Fool Killer. Uh, that was another good one. Um, but now, so with the with the Ace, you're writing this, right? Yep, I'm the writer do, creator of this. Do you draw at all? Ah, no, I wanted. I had dreams of being an artist and joining Marvel and all that, but by the time I, I was at I got to high school, I would, that was not me. I don't I don't have the uh, the skills or the patience for for for, for being an artist. So. That's cool because I know you got Canalis drawing this. I just wanted I was I, I, I wasn't sure if like you drew a little, but like you decided to get a different artist. 
So when did you start writing? When was that like a thing that you decided you wanted to do? I mean, I've always kind of written, not like full on writer. Like I, I've never claimed to, to write any novels or anything like that, but I've always been somebody who's had a lot of creative ideas and I've always enjoyed writing them. And I've always, enjoyed, I've had notebooks full of notes and ideas and, and story just anything, anything. It doesn't even have to be like comic book related, movie ideas, uh, you know, right. video game ideas. Like I so said, I've always been somebody who like had tons of notes and stuff in my head. So I, I like to get it down on paper even. If nothing ever comes of it, like I've always gone through that process. So like, you know, coming up with ideas to me has always been easy, you know, the, the real kind of challenge has been kind of being able to put everything into like a comic book format where it makes it easy for the artist to be able to translate it, you know? So that, that, that's kind of been like the biggest kind of learning experience. Uh, that's cool. So you just this. decided to say, you know what, I'm going to take these ideas and I'm going to just throw, throw in the uh, gauntlet and, uh, and put it out there and, and see, you see. Yeah. I did like see. a lot of like uh, pre-planning too. Like uh, I'm a big uh, Green Lantern fan. So I'm a big fan Ooh. of like Jeff Johns. Yeah. And uh, he, he did this cool thing where, uh, Blackest Night number one, he put out a director's cut issue. And the director's cut issue actually has his full script for the first issue. So you actually get to see how Jeff Johns write an entire comic book script from start to finish. You see the notes he puts, the stuff he tells his artist to do, you know, when he lets his artist kind of break loose and do stuff. It's incredibly detailed. I've never seen anything like that. So that's always been something that I've always kind of had around and I, i've always looked at it and when you know when i was going through the process of writing the ace and getting it down in that format that was something that i would look at a lot see like the details that he puts in and how he translates it so his artists can, can manifest it and you know you're all you're seeing the script and then the cool thing about it you're also seeing the art so i can go to page five and see jeff's breakdown of what he's telling his artist ivan reese to do and see how ivan translates it so that, that can kind of get me in that mind frame. Like, it, you know, when I'm writing and stuff, whoever my artist, Canales, uh, Donald, whoever, you know, I'm trying to break it down in that same manner that Jeff does. Obviously he's, you know, world renowned like writer and stuff, but it, it kind of helps give you like a little bit of a format to how to do it. It's almost like a little sheet sheet that, that you can use. So. Yeah, yeah, like a little guide. Yeah. yeah. I should I should pick that up because I'd like to have that to see how yeah. he did it. I didn't know he did that. Yeah, um, I think that's the only time I've ever seen anybody do something like that. So, right, right. Um, <laughs> not just yet, not just yet. I, a little bit beforehand, uh, before the show started, Jack. But I'll, I'll catch up. I'll catch up. <laughs> uh, I'm going to send telepathic. I don't know. They're just having a conversation. Um, <laughs> Okay, let's pull it up. I got it open here. The A's. Yeah, because my uh, my writer uh, for our project, she comes from the Hollywood uh, scene, so her script is like like Hollywood style script. So it's yeah. a little that's the that's a little new for me to get used to. Um, but it, you know, it took a minute. Like I had to read it oh, like a couple of times to like get the vi you know the feel for it, because it's a little different than a comic book script, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've seen comic book scripts that are similar and I've seen ones where it's literally just like page outlines. You know what I mean? Like there's so many different ways to do a comic book script, I guess. But, uh, but, um, what you call it? Like to, to actually have somebody who's like legit doing like a script script is kind of crazy. Cause that was, it was originally meant to be a, a TV series. Uh, that was how she envisioned it, you know? So, right. Um, but you are in demand, my friend, and you are funded. Uh, when did you fund? You funded about a, oh, a little over a month ago. So how long have you been in demand now? Uh, it's been about a month and a half. All right. I, oh, that man, time flies, bro. Oh yeah. It feels like I lost it yesterday. I know. I know. We're in demand too. And I feel like I just launched, you know? Mm -hmm. And 60 days goes by quick when yeah, you're, uh, you blink and it's gone, man. It's uh, pretty exhausting. And then you kick yourself. You're like, I could have done more. I could have done yeah. so much more, but there's only so many hours in a day. So yeah, many you channels. can't like push yourself. You gotta, I'm not someone I can't fake. I can't fake my energy and stuff. So 
Yeah. You know, if I'm, no, if I'm dragging, it's going to be a terrible interview. And I don't, I don't, I, I, you know, I've been on the other side where I'm interviewing people with that. I, I just, I don't want to do that to people. So if I haven't been in the mind frame to do it, I'd have to just take some time off and recharge my batteries and then get to a place where I can, you know, at least bring like a good energy and, and really kind of promote it well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Like, um, and then in the middle of it, I went back to work, you know, like after being unemployed for over a year because of the whole COVID thing. So that kind of got like crazy because then it was like doing my show or trying to do other people's shows. Like you, you saw, like I was, I was screwing up dates. I was, <laughs> I, I got back to you. I was like, wait a minute. I think I got the right day with the wrong date. <laughs> I was like, because it was just so much to juggle, but, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been hectic, but it's been fun. I got to say it's been, it's been a lot of fun. And uh, so give us a little uh, tidbit of what the uh, ACE is about. Like, I know, you know, th this is the same spiel that you probably go through all the time. But like, I know th this is very similar to Dark Hawk, I think. Uh, right. It, you, you've mentioned where it's like it's a young guy who gets bestowed this, this suit. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, you could definitely, you know, I always laugh when I hear people say, oh, you know, the, the Mandalorian guy. And I'm like, I mean. Yeah, I, I get the Mandalorian influence, but you know, if you really want to make fun of it, you you you'd get the Dark Hawk reference right away because it's it's kind of obvious, you know. Uh, yeah, 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 and I dig yeah. that. I I like it because like you know, um, because Dark Hawk was such a, a smaller, uh, I don't want to say obscure because I guess he did get a little more popular, but he was definitely a smaller um, character. Like I don't think people get get that reference right away unless you were someone like me. I collect like you, like you. I collected the whole run. I think I, I may still have the whole run of Darkhawk. I still have like ten long boxes of comics. I did lose a box, which pissed me off. Oh. Um, me, in all my uh, many moves. So. I think I got like uh, one through thirty. I ended up having to rebuy them because uh, actually I lost all my comics in a fire in two thousand one. So Ooh, you know, sucks. and that was during a time where I wasn't collecting comics like the so it was i didn't even start collecting about 2004 2005 so like once i lost them i was like oh well that sucked but i'm not reading comics so i don't have to worry about it and then once i got back to comics it was dc it was green lantern mostly and it wasn't like after a couple of years of, of where i started kind of getting like man like i it's, you know just kind of going through my head of different comics i used to have like the x-men i picked up a bunch of like uh all the like that that those x-men Will Sportatio, Jim Lee issues, I you know, and then I started getting some like the Dark Hawk ones and some kind of spare ones. So I've slowly kind of gotten the collection up a bit, but yeah, like uh, yeah, I would love to have all those again. I gotta, you know, <laughs> funding this comic book kind of stopping, uh, completing it, but I'll get back to it. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the beauty about it though. Like you can always get like when you have a couple extra bucks and some time, mm -hmm. go go to a shop or just you know go on ebay the thing with ebay is you got to make sure you find the right the right people selling you don't want to just buy yeah. from some guy selling it i mean maybe sometimes it works out but a lot of times they're not in the greatest condition you want to find a guy who like maybe has a shop but also sells on ebay or something like that you know um yeah i like doing it at conventions because uh you know if, if you get like if you're able to like just get like a good like little stand and if they've got like old x-men issues you know i could pick up a whole like I could pick up a whole like 20 issues right there from the jump. Don't even have to like look for it. Like, oh, you got right. X-Men? Take these 20 issues. There you go. <laughs> I'm all set. Let's go. Yeah. Like I said, like I, I have uh, 10 long boxes now. Um, but when I was moving for, you know, dur during, you know, from like 2002 to about 2010, I moved a bunch of times. Uh, um being in bands, different roommates, stuff like that. You know, you just move around and stuff. And somewhere along the line, they weren't in long boxes then. They were like in regular big old brown boxes. And um, I, I lost one because I was like missing so many uh, different comics. For like, But it, it, they must have been, I don't know, because it was like different titles. So the, they weren't in alphabetical order or anything. It was so weird. I was like, I know I had that issue. Right. And I didn't get rid of my comics so, or I didn't sell any. So uh, I'm I, in one of the houses, like there was a couple of houses where like I would just, we would just leave shit behind. You know what I mean? Like we had a foosball table that was busted. I was like, I just leave it for the next guy. You know, like just leave it. So I might have just left the box, but thinking it was something else. And 
Yeah, and I've been like slowly trying to get fill those gaps. You know, like we fill those gaps first, and then uh, go for the ones that I never had. But so I, I I understand the struggle. You know, but like you yeah. said, sometimes you don't have the extra cash, you don't have the time. Yeah. Um, but so this is the Donald Delay cover, right? And, uh, one and only, you know. Uh, I know there's been all this talk a couple months back. You know, there, there was this debate: who's got the best cover? Cyber Frog, Jawbreakers. And I'm like, uh, I'm sorry, but do any of those have a giant humanoid alien shark creature? If the answer is no, then you lose by default. So I, you know, I would like to crown Donald the king of covers. You know, I think it's it's pretty fair take right there. Yeah, no, 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 I love Donald's work, man, because I love his his um, uh, flexibility. I don't want to say diverse, you know, diversity, but it's flexibility and styles. You know what I mean? Like you saw it with Brutus, you see it with this, you see it with Cash Grab, you know what I mean? Um, he did the first Vestige too, if I remember. Yeah. Uh, and that was even different, you know? Um, Sharknado. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Billy Power Max, yes, this is on Indiegogo right now. You can uh, go check it out. Yeah, the link is in the description. Let me uh, throw the link in the chat as well. Um, and Edwin's, uh, Twitter, um, handle is in uh, the link to that is in the description as well. Uh, and from there you can, yeah, you can, you you can can follow follow. me on there. You know, you want to hear about pro wrestling and you want to hear about the ace. That's what you'll get. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got (laughs) a YouTube channel. Yeah. I always forget to put people's YouTube channels in the description. Uh, I got to get better at that. I always forget. I don't know why. I always put the Twitter in the Indiegogo, yeah. and then I always forget the YouTube. That's like the <laughs> easiest, most uh, kind of like uh, things that make the sense. But yeah, if you want to check out my YouTube channel, it's called Drawing Aces. Just type in Drawing Aces into YouTube. You'll see the little uh, Mandalorian-looking guy. You just <laughs> hit subscribe on that. I do a pimp stream every Friday night at 10, 15 p.m. Eastern. Uh, hang out with uh, you know up-and-coming creators, talk about their projects. Then I do a watch along same time and we hang out with some of the hardline guys and we just bs and watch a movie uh you know for like an hour and a half two hours however long and then, you know it's just a fun time you can you know since you can't show anything on youtube we actually link you to uh sims uh, discord and you know he usually streams this you, even if you don't have the, the copy you can just go there and you can watch along with us listen to us uh make jokes about batman being a klepto and uh, you know lots of fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so d- definitely go how uh how much longer are you going to keep this in demand for i don't probably go probably i'm thinking about november uh, oh you're going to keep it open that long yeah yeah i want to I've, I've you know a lot of the hardline guys that i've seen how you know, their campaigns have kind of ebbed and flowed and uh several guys have actually made quite a bit during in demand so you know you give the option to keep it open but you know if things don't really trend the right way out and it doesn't make sense that I'm closer before, but I think November's probably good, and then I can start kind of focusing uh, towards volume two. Um, that's up to you. Uh, yeah. There's there's no way, uh, no COVID restrictions on any government. No, no mask on mandates. So. <laughs> yeah. And IGG. You know. um, so we got Donald DeLay. Uh, he does the cover. Mm-hmm. Um, you're writing, and you're obviously the creator. And then the... Yeah, this is the part that I was interested in. So you got the main story with art by Canalis, yes, which sir. is awesome because you never get, you've yet, well, I shouldn't say you never, you've yet to see his art colored. So this is a first, as far as I know. I could yeah. be wrong. Uh, no, I think he did uh, He did uh, Necromancer. He colored it himself, though. Uh, I think the first time anybody's colored him. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, yeah, and that's how uh, Theo Gonzalez doing the colors. Uh, Theo did the colors for Donald's book, Brutus. That's how I found him. So, oh, okay. Yeah, he did a great job on this. He colored the main story. He colored the cover. And he also colored one of the uh, the prints. So he did a great job. And then you got an epilogue, uh, part one, with art by Sweens uh, yes. of Oddity. Yeah, he. Uh, I like his art. Uh, I backed Oddity. I'm, I'm still, you know, I can't wait for that that one to come out because it, 
the the art style looks really really cool. Yeah, Sweeney's is uh very detailed. He uh he does dark colors on it too, so he labors over it. That's probably why uh you know there's been it's taking so long for oddity because he actually has to color it himself, and that, that's a whole other process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he did a and terrific job on like uh, the Apple Lock story. I'm beyond excited for people to, to check it out. He blew me away. And then Angelique Origin, um, is that another uh, story in the book? Yeah, it's a four-page uh, origin story done by uh, How Comics, Alan Alonzo. He did the Masquerade story on uh, Lost Pages. And he oh, also right, colors right, right, his right. own work, yeah. Very cool. And then uh, you got Adam to do the letters. I always forget that he letters, yeah. man. Yeah, he's uh, lettered uh, a lot of books. He did uh, yeah. do well for Mike Murphy. He did more lethal for for Aaron. Yeah, he, and he and he's a cool dude. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't seen him around in a bit, but he's, nah, he's, he's been cool working, dude. working, working. You know. <laughs> yeah, I should I should hit him up. You know, if uh, I if I start having trouble lettering my book, uh, I should probably just hit him up, see what he what he, if if he's got some. Uh, time you know to to yeah. do it and here we got some sample pages of uh and you could tell i mean even colored you could totally tell this is canalis you know yeah i love like his expressions and you can tell the detail and like the character's eyes all that like i love that bottom panel there like the moment this he sent that to me i was like this is perfect man he just captures the the like the, the desperation in david's face and then the worry in his mom's face even without the dialogue you can tell you can follow the page which is the the biggest compliment you can give any artist like he basically translated what i needed without one word having to be said in, in the, that page yeah i mean i can kind of tell right I'm, I'm assuming this is probably when he first gets the suit he freaks out runs into his mother she freaks out and then yeah. he's like no it's me <laughs> you know am i right huh? Close, uh, close. Yeah, like, yeah. It makes it easy for you to put most of it together. You know, like yeah. the actual dialogue. We'll put the full thing together once you get it. But you more know, of the it, context, it, yeah. So, but yeah, you can capture most of it. Very simple, and like I said, I do love the emotion. The little, the little bits are, are what make the art really stand out. And he put tons of detail into this. Like even like little panels and stuff. There's a panel below, a little, uh, a little below. Uh, yeah, I love that the punch there. That's great. But the the one actually below that, uh, that's not a big panel right there. When you see the, the ace looking, yeah, that ship and everything. He put so much detail in that for a small panel that on the page won't look that big. But he completely created that. He created the ship, the alien dialogue, everything around it. All I had was a couple notes about like, oh, a cooler comes in flying in his ship, and then I gave a couple notes about the ship. And he completely just took that and just created this whole thing for just like one panel. Like this is the only shot outside of the ship that you get. <laughs> and he just put oh, all yeah. that detail into it. So he's, he's killer, man. Like people have no idea that guy's getting so good. And now that you see him colored, you see like the little kick. Very great job, it, man. That was the one thing like, you know, like he caught a lot of flack. <clears throat> In the beginning days with iron sights and i think that was more because it was zach's book than anything yeah. you know what i mean um for his style but i was like his style is super traditional indie like mm -hmm. if you went back to the 80s and picked up any indie book and i'm not talking dark horse and i'm you know i'm talking actual indie press books that's the style you got like you know what i mean like that his style reminds me of picking up like an old 80s indie book like like the stuff you would see with like turtles or or yeah. hamsters and stuff like that, like Bill Mouse type of style, you know. Like, uh, and I was like, and I was like, so for these these friggin' leftists to be fucking ripping apart his art, it's like this is how I know you're not real comic book fans because you have no clue about the history of indie comics. Like, if anything, you'd be like, this is like a time capsule, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think that's why, like, I'm like super excited to see like all this his stuff colored, but I love his stuff in black and white because it does it, it captures that that like old school black and white indie vibe, you know. Mm -hmm. But I've never seen his stuff colored, so I'm really excited to see it come out colored, you know. And mm -hmm. just from what I'm seeing here, it, it's it's awesome. So, and then this is the Sween, 
Uh, yeah, this the, is Sweden's the, uh, the epilogue story. Uh, you know, this is a bit of a mystery piece, I like to call it. You know, it's kind of, I compare a lot to kind of like Lost. It's kind of like, you know, you have the main story and the epilogue story kind of flows in its own way, but eventually it'll kind of catch up to the main story. So, so you know, gotcha. kind of, you know, give you a little bit of a mystery piece. You're going to have to kind of read a couple epilogue. It, you know, each, each issue is going to have an epilogue story. So you're gonna have to kind of piece it together and eventually hopefully it'll weave like a whole bigger story that'll come together in uh, later volumes. But yeah, man, so nice. he's done a terrific job with this, man. Like he just, so pumped, man. It's completely different from Oddity too. So people like, when they yeah. get him, they're gonna be blown away. Like I really it, love what he did on there. I can just, uh, just from remembering the panels that were shown for Oddity, this is already a different style. Mm -hmm. um, and I love what he did here with the transparent, like yeah. the, like going invisible or whatever. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Is this Sween also or? Yep, that's him. Like the colors, like I love the little like, uh, you know, that, that kind of leaking, whatever that is uh, from like the, uh, from the robot Android there. You know, that whole yeah. thing is just the details on that guy just goes nuts. <laughs> it's like fluid, but yeah electrical at the same time it's really yes. cool yeah <coughs> excuse me i like that that shit with the the the, the afterburners going that's yeah. cool and that's what you can get when you get like you know him coloring his own stuff you know he knows how to like really bring out the, the extra pop in it so yeah yeah i think uh, that it, it works well um and unless there's like a, a colorist uh um that like that you know is beyond your abilities i think it's a you know it's nice when like you color your own stuff because you you, you already know how you see it in your head you know what i mean so yeah. um and then uh we got the angelique origin story now she, i'm assuming because uh i've heard you talk about the book but i i unless i missed one of your interviews i don't remember you actually talking about angelique i have uh but you know mostly uh, you know since it is an origin story uh you know you don't go too deep into it but basically uh this gives you like a sneak peek at her she's going to be the main antagonist for volume two uh, i wanted a way to kind of introduce her in the first book but without having to completely change what i had already set up in the main story in the epilogue and you know i'm a big fan of like uh you know the lost pages and you know i'm, I'm buddies with phil so, you know, the idea he was doing these four page like backup stories for a second book. And I just mm -hmm. thought like, it'd be cool to do something, do like a little origin story that kind of won't spoil everything about her, but would also help introduce her and, and right. kind of get you more familiar for her who in volume two comes out, you already have a sense that you know about her. So, uh, yeah, this is kind of uh, what I came up with is, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, how just did a tremendous job, you know, I, I like to call this a bit of like a dark fairy tale almost, you know, it's like he's got that, that fantasy style to his art, which, which mm -hmm. I love. And yeah. So. Yeah. I'm saying that here with these like Elvish looking yeah. uh, ladies. And then this guy over here, mm -hmm. um, additional tears, Mike McMahon from uh, us assassin comic size print colored by Potier. Nice. Yeah. That's a so great. This is good. This is going to be like a seven by 10, uh, seven by 11 or whatever. Yeah. It'll be about uh, around comic size. Uh, it's beautiful print. Uh, it's basically, uh, Ace standing over a pile of all these destroyed Android robots. And it's like the full piece is really is beautiful. Uh, and Mike did a great job and Sim just colored the hell out of his very completely like 90 style, which I was going for. And it's just, uh, it's really going to be yeah. nice. Yeah, it pops with that like royal blue and like mm -hmm. and like crimson reds that you know you definitely had a lot of that in the nineties, you know. Yeah. Uh, you can almost see this as like a foil cover or something, you know? It's like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, 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 uh, either go with like the red and blue being foil, or yeah. like the the silver could be foil. You could go so many different directions, but what you would want to make foil on it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, he did a good job. I like Sims. Sims, Sims, really talented dude. Yeah, um, hardline jam piece poster featuring art by Joe Ball. 
Yeah. Uh, Sweden's. Uh, this is uh, no longer available, but as you can see right behind me, uh, that's the uh, poster. I should say that way or that way, wherever the hell it is. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Nice. Yeah, so I got that printed out, uh, you know, ready to go. Let's see. Stretch goals, 3,500, which we've hit, right? Because we're at like almost seven grand. So. Yeah, we've unlocked all these stretch goals, which is really awesome for everybody who's uh, who's back to book because they get everything here added for free. So so this is a Angelique trading card by Doodle Bags. Yep. I got that in. All right. <laughs> Oh, nice. Yep, that's him. It's the back of it. So, it's nice. ready to go. We, uh, I was going to say, no uh, campaign is complete without a sticker by 6 a.m., mm, but. No. And you actually get four. So. I, I thought about it for my campaign, but this campaign, there's really no, like, characters that he can, like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, it's, it's more. It, it, it's very psychological and psychedelic and there was like alternate things going on like dreamscapes and past lives and stuff but the the characters themselves are just humans you know what i mean so there's no like characters where he, he can like do his cutesy thing you know and like make them like still recognizable you mm -hmm. know so but then my next book definitely i'm gonna get him to do stickers because there's gonna be werewolves and vampires and all that kind of shit going on so um it'll definitely work out I love this. Is this uh, one of the stickers too? Yep. Uh, so all four stickers have been unlocked. So you'll get a little sheet with all the stickers on there. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. You, see, you see what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. like his, you know, like, yeah, it just wouldn't work. You know, uh, a FBI agent in a, you know, pantsuit. It would <laughs> just look like some cartoon girl. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, all right, next one. Jim O'Reilly. I, I got to meet him uh, a couple of weeks ago when I had uh, Don Chin on, and he asked me if I if he if I could bring uh, Jim on. I was like, sure. Really nice dude. I, I mean, talented guy. I mean, I've known his work, but really nice guy. Yeah, he does uh, great work. Uh, he did that sick uh, kaiju print. Print uh, completely just blew it away, man. Yeah. Very excited. Yeah, you know, for people that's to awesome. See that. And then what mm -hmm. do we got here? Yeah, you got the little uh, Angelique Sexy print by PM and Tunes. Uh, so, so, yeah, all of these have been unlocked. So if you back the Ace right now, uh, you know, just get like the regular comic book tier. You'll get the two prints, the four stickers, and the trading card. All additional right to you. Yeah, you can't For beat all that. Backers. No. And so as far as the tiers do go, you got the uh, feature tier here, which is the uh, Ace comic and uh, the print, which we saw. Yeah, and then uh, you also have the uh, Akula metal print, which is only running until the end of the month. I actually have a full image of that on the last update I did. Oh, okay, let's go to the updates and we'll take a look. Well, oh, wrong way, Anthony, wrong way. There it is. Um, oh, no, that's the one before for that, actually. That's uh, the poster and then the that one there. Yeah, there, you there go. it is. Wow. Yeah, this is by Omar Casanova, and he sent me this, uh, and it just kind of blew me away. I've been thinking about doing the metal print stuff, but I didn't think there was anything that really kind of stood out too much. But then when right. I saw the colors he did on this, I just thought, like, this would look sick. Metal. And yeah. Top of finish animation, and he sent me like a little test preview, and I was like, "Yeah, this would be sick." So we did went with it. So we've offering this until the end of May, uh, May thirty first, uh, twelve Eastern. It goes away because uh, this campaign does exclusives. It's something mm -hmm. I'm trying out for my first campaign. So like I said, I was offering the Hardline Jam piece. That's gone. Uh, you know, we did the uh, the Kula poster print. That's also gone. You know, it's kind of like an incentive to get people to back. And like I right, said, any the extra moment. copies are going to go just to like the my artists for comps and replacements 
I won't be doing like a huge overprint of these. So if yeah. you want them, yeah. get them because they'll they'll be gone away. Yeah, because like yeah, if you give them, you know, give them to the artists as comps, you know, they they you might be able to buy it off them. But I guarantee, if you're buying it off them and 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 they sign it or something like that, you're gonna be paying way more than you would get it here. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll be right yeah, back. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Um, let's see what we got. We got uh, just the comic book is uh, fifteen bucks. And like and like Edwin said, if you guys back just the book, you're gonna get all those um, stretch goal perks that were unlocked. Uh, so for fifteen bucks, you're gonna get that the trading card, the four stickers. Um, what am I missing? And the and the one print, I think. Uh, two prints. Uh, oh, two prints. Nice. That's the one that's no longer available, right? Yep. Uh, this is officially gone this is the oh, excuse me that's how it's supposed to look but you know you can also have it that way too so yeah that's awesome yeah. man i just i got these in from mixum so very cool yeah so i'm starting the process you know ordering some gemini's i got some tape i got some I had to get like 200 top loaders <laughs> which aren't cheap <laughs> For the trading right. cards, oh, you know, the, the bags cards, and boards. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's been a process, but you know, yeah, like uh, it's it's funny because like uh, I, I'm I'm gonna be able to start doing some of that because uh, uh, Indiegogo, you know, dispersed you know the majority of the funds, and it's funny I didn't know they automatically did that. I thought you just when you were ready, you just said, okay, give me the money, right? So all of a sudden, I got the email notification. Your funds have been dispersed. I'm like, dude, did I get hacked? Who's <laughs> taking my money? <laughs> I had no clue that they did it automatically like that. And uh, I ran to my like the computer. I, I checked the bank, my, my bank account, and uh, it wasn't there. You know, but it, it, the email did say. Yeah, it takes um, about like a week to ten days for it to like. Right to go through. So now I, I'm freaking out. I'm like, I didn't authorize this disbursement. So I'm like. I start reaching out to everybody I know who's done a campaign. I reached out to like Mandy. I reached out to uh, Anthony Figaro. I was like, somebody please tell me, like, do they automatically do this? And they were like, yeah, yeah, relax, relax. They just, they <laughs> automatically send you the money. I was like, I was like, oh man, I thought I got hacked and someone was stealing the money. Ah. Um, if you want to buy just the metal print, you can do that yourself. Are, are any of these add-ons, have you tr done anything with add-ons? Yeah, I do have some add-ons. Uh, I'm not sure the metal print though is because I pretty much just offered it in tiers. So I offered it with the book, with the print by itself. So because I, I had yeah. already removed some uh, some of the tiers, so you know I usually have like a set limit that I want on the page. So like once I got rid of the old tiers, I could just slide those in, and, and the the page wouldn't be too busy. So right, right, makes sense. Um. This is the book plus the print, mm -hmm. you know, just the metal print, mm -hmm. uh, with without the uh, McMahon one. Um, two copies in, of the book and the McMahon print. Mm -hmm. You got some original. Canales original art. Nice. Yes, uh, they have nine pages left. Uh yeah, one out of ten is claimed, so you got nine nine pages left. And the thing with uh, Canales is, uh, you know his original art isn't really offered into many campaigns so yeah. like this is like an exclusive he actually sent all those pages from from spain i have them in uh you know on a stand uh on, in my uh, office uh so yeah like uh, it's first come first serve so i'll send you the images of everything that we have and you can pick your uh your canalis uh art really nice collectible and if you What's know, up, good are, stuff yeah, hell, comics, uh, comic skater. <laughs> Good stuff, comic skater. Yeah, he's he's a cool dude. He's a he's a you know that good supporter. And turns out his daughter is a phenomenal singer. Awesome. Uh, we were on an open mic night the other night, and like, oh he yeah, I think I, I saw that for you, a little bit. Were you watching? Know. But that was nefarious. Yeah, I just kind of took yeah. like a, just took like a little. Damn, like we're getting ready for our hardline show, so. 
Yeah, and it was funny because he came on like he was going to sing, and then like the music starts playing, and all of a sudden this this girl, you know, this woman's voice comes through, like this yeah. real sultry, bluesy singer, and we're all like, and everybody's thinking that it's him, like pretending. <laughs> and I'm like, no, dude, he pulled the switcheroo. I, at first, I thought it was his wife because his wife was in the chat, you know. Yeah. Uh, but then it turned out it was his daughter. Um, so I said, I said, I go, someone like who's got a voice like that, they already have the the computer set up. They just don't have the mics. So I have a bunch of professional mics uh, laying around, and if then if if one of them is still in good shape, I'll I'll I I got like five or six, you know, for backups. Mm -hmm. I'll set, I'll send her one and uh, tell them what, you know, they'll just have to buy an audio interface and uh, some good software and she can lay down vocal. I, I would use her on some of the music that I do for the comic skate music that I do, like for people's trailers and, yeah. um, and stuff like that. I would totally, like if someone hired me to, to, to do the music for their trailer and I, and, and it required like a female vocalist, I would totally, um, uh, I would use her. She, she's phenomenal, phenomenal vocals. You got it, brother. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I don't know how old she is. She, you know, she sounds like she's uh, you know, at least in her late teens. Um, but it, she's, you know, obviously younger, young, you know, if we're in our forties, she's probably somewhere between like 15 and 20, I would think just judging from her voice. Uh, from when she was talking, but somebody with that much talent, you know, if I could help out in any way, if sending a microphone helps her pursue singing in, in some way and makes it easier for her. I mean, why wouldn't she's 22. Okay. Yeah. So she's still young and she's got, you know, plenty of time to like, you know, uh, work her, work her skills. And uh, if I could help out in any way, I will, I will, uh, do so um and let's see what we all missed out on yes. the joe ball sketch card original art um, uh, or is that missed, just a sketch card just a sketch card uh, yes, sketch card you missed out on a ton of sketch cards yeah they, uh, they all sold out thank you to everybody who's backed them we have them by joe ball by michael beacon by passion for drawing by uh, brandon diaz yeah yeah so yeah hopefully we'll yeah, be getting some on uh in the not too uh, distant future get a couple more on for for the people we also had some from uh, preston acevedo so yeah oh, nice. everybody who's out back those i have all the cards in a little dresser uh so they're all nice and safe and sound so get them out to you when i start shipping yeah there's passion two from passion i was just on a stream with him not too long ago what stream was that Oh, I think that was topicless. Uh with Death Metal Hero and uh yeah. Unhinged Entertainment. Yeah. Dude, good looking campaign, brother. Good looking campaign. Yeah, thank you, man. Especially for like the first one out the gate. Um and like I said, you know, like I mean we've we've been bumping shoulders since back in my midnight images days, you know, so for the last four years. Um Never knew that you were going to do a book or ever wanted to do a no, book. Was, uh, you no, know? well, like I said, it's one of the things that just kind of came together. You know, it's like uh, it's one thing I've noticed about this whole project since the start, I seem to like stumble into the right people and the right kind of, you know, like uh, I'll tell you, like uh, I actually had another artist lined up to do the book. Uh, you know, it's another artist that I'm friends with and he actually did a full page for me. He colored it, he lettered it. He was going to start working on the next one. Then he has some like personal issues. Uh, so right. he, he had to drop out. And, you know, that's when things opened up for Canales. And, you know, I remember hitting him up and just talking to him. And he was finishing some stuff up. And he kind of told me, you know, he had time for like a small project. And, you know, mine isn't, you know, it's not like a full, like, you didn't have to do like a full, like 40 pages or 30 some pages. It's, it's like a shorter story. Uh, so, you know, we kind of hooked up and he said, yeah, I can, I can do that. Those pages that's, that'll kind of fit right in where when I'm free. And like I said, he jumped on it and, and same thing with Donald, uh, actually had another cover artist, uh, it didn't work out with him. And I reached out to Donald, like, hey, cause you know, I knew Canales and Donald, like, you know, we're, we're a fairly terms and stuff. So, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a fan of them. So I just hit up Donald, asked him if he was free for 
to do the cover. He's like, yeah, I'd love to do the cover. And, you know, like everything just kind of came together. It seems like every time, like I said, like a door closes or something doesn't go, you know, like I said, Donald recommended Theo because I needed a colors for, for, uh, for Ibai. Uh, Cause you know, like I wanted the book in color. That was like one of right. the things I was like, I don't really, I don't know any colorist. So like Donald suggested Theo and Theo agreed to, to do it. And like I said, just one thing after the other, uh, Sween's, uh, when I hooked up with him, you know, I knew he was doing oddity. So he could only give me like a certain amount of pages. And they took a very long time because he was doing oddity. So like everything worked out time-wise, like he could fit, he, he, he literally finished the last page, like a couple weeks before they needed to be lettered and the book needed to be kind of set up where I wanted it to. So like everything right. just kind of stumbles on to like, and it just has worked out so far. So, well, yeah, it's funny that you said, cause it was the same way with, with hunting Alice. Like I did the cover a, um, and I was doing my own colors and I had this, this picture in my head of what I wanted to look like, but I couldn't get it like color wise. I couldn't, I, it wasn't coming out right. And I remember just saying on a stream, how frustrated I was and Matt Crotz reached out to me he's like i have this idea for a black light inspired theme it's similar to what you're going for but just more vibrant and he's like if you like it we can work out a deal and i'll send you the high res file and i said if you got time i mean if you're offering and you got time so he sends me the the picture and uh i i loved it and that that's the one that's behind me over my shoulder here yeah um and because it was this black light inspired uh, color scheme that he went with, it inspired me to try to find a black light poster. You know, somebody to do a black light poster with like the, they call it flocked. It's that velvet material, kind of like the salamandroid poster. Yeah. Um, nobody that I could find does the flocking. It's just like a regular paper black light poster, and I was like, I don't want that. Um, but I found this company who does these wall tapestries. Um, and they're black light, or you can get non black light if you want. Um. And yeah, so it was like, like you said, like it was like a one snowball after it, the other, like I worked out a deal with Matt, you know, then he sent me the high res file. I went looking for the posters, found these tapestries and said, I'll never do a poster again because these are 24 by 36. Nice. Um, and uh, they, they come in a sealed plastic bag that's weather resistant. So if someone just orders the tapestry, you could put it in a regular bubble mailer and it's, it'll be fine. Uh, otherwise, it's about the same size, a little bit smaller than a comic uh, when it's folded up. So it slips right in the Gemini. And once you hang it up, gravity does the work and the wrinkles come out, all the creases. So it's not like you have to fold up a, uh, um, you know, fold up like a, a poster and then it's got the crease or buy the tube and have extra, extra cost. Um, and then with cover B, Vic King asked me to do the music for his project he did with Nasser, the Asile book. Yeah. And I've been buddies with Vic since day one of Comicsgate. And um, he's like, how much would it be for you to do the music for the trailer? And I said, why don't you do a variant cover for me? I was kind of half kidding, but I was kind of like half serious. Mm -hmm. And he was like, sure. I was like, awesome. And uh, like to this day, he says... Uh, um, he got the better end of the bargain. I say I got the better end of the bargain. So as long as everybody's happy, right? Yeah. And then he suggested Billy Basco for the colors. So um, what you call it? Uh, called, you know, hit up Billy, worked out a deal with him. He did the colors. And that's the one that's, that's that one. So that's yeah. the cover B and that's the cover A. And um, Jay from Unhinged Entertainment did some fan art of the roulette character, which is the side story uh, of this se totally separate uh, situation, separate character. Um, that, that's going to be the ash can. And I loved it so much. I colored it and said, can I use it as the cover for the ash can? And he was like, do what you want with it. It's yours. So it was like, just like one of those things that like, yeah, just kind of everything kind of, uh, you know, Pete Gilmore did the uh, introductory you know, like the email list sign up trading card, you know? So, uh, yeah, it, it all worked out. It was, it was, it was really cool. I love when things like that happen is because like everybody in this community, we, you know, uh, it, 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 as long as, I guess, as long as you're friendly with them, uh, they all want to help out and see everybody succeed and stuff like that in, in some way, you know? So it's pretty cool. 
it's pretty yeah, cool. If, uh, you know, you're good peoples and people know like you're not trying to, you know, do anybody wrong or not. Well, most most people are are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. But um, yeah, we're we're coming up on the hour mark. Is there anything else you want to touch on that we maybe didn't touch on? No, I pretty much covered everything. I do want to get in a little shout out for my uh, indie uh, pro wrestling channel. It's called uh, yeah. Indie Wrestling Aces. It's got over sixty four hundred subs. Uh, it's fully monetized, so you know if you're a pro wrestling fan, you can go stop by there, check out a couple of videos. It helps me out. So absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what you should do is DM me uh, the links to both your channels, and I'll add them to the description. You know, after the fact, so at least they're there. Oh, um, and uh, one more thing: the uh, the Zade uh, boys have a Etsy store called uh, Zade Workshops. They have a bunch of shirts for the Hardline guys. Uh, Sims got a shirt, a bunch of Magic Cop, Lost Pages shirts. I have an A shirt in there. Uh, oh, cool! It's like a Mothman shirt. It's like a, like seven or eight cool shirts that uh you know we have there and like i said if you like uh you know i tweeted out really for like comic skate you like some sweet merch there's some really nice quality uh shirts you know brandon uh prints them himself and uh it definitely helps out the creators who are trying to you know uh make this thing happen so uh, you can yeah check that out definitely send me the link to that send me those three links i'll add them to the description so they're all in the description of the video um I just threw the link for the Ace Indiegogo back in the chat again. Uh, so if anybody hasn't, they can go check it out and uh, maybe maybe uh, maybe get a metal print or get the book in the metal print. You know, uh, you're mm -hmm. gonna get all the stretch goals. So whatever you get, you're gonna get some value for your dollar. That's yeah, gonna and, be a uh, great bang for your buck. So go check it out. And uh, thank everybody for hanging out in the chat and uh, anybody watching the replay. And I want to thank Edwin for popping on and. Um, yeah. Anything else, brother? That's it, man. Hail the chat, as always. Hail the chat. Always remember, guys, Dark If loves you.